Hey everyone, welcome to Data Millennials. I'm Atul and in this video we are going to see how we can create and customize gauge chart in Google Data Studio or Looker. So we are going to create this similar gauge chart which you can see over here. So before we go ahead and start creating this gauge chart, we should understand what exactly is a gauge chart and when we should use it in our dashboard. So this chart gives you a way to quickly see how well a given metrics is performing against a target goal. The component of a Gauss chart are a central bar showing the actual value of metrics you are graphing which is this one. Then an optional vertical line showing a target value. So this is your target value. Then an optional comparison value and an optional colored band that represents threshold ranges such as poor average and good so you can use your gauss chart to monitor various health or performance of your kpis so gauss chart in looker studio visualize a single metric and you can optionally display a minimum maximum value or target value or you can say it as a comparison value and set up up to five ranges you can also change the chart colors and apply data filtration on this gauze chart so let's go and see how we can create a gauze chart so what i'm going to do over here is that i'm going to click on this edit button and then i'm going to add a page first so that i can show you how we can create this gauze chart from scratch so if you have added your data source in your looker then you can go ahead and start creating this chart else you have to go to resources click manage added data sources and then you can click on add a data source to add your data source once you have added your data source then you can click on add a chart scroll down you will see this option gauss chart click on the first gauss chart and this is the simplest gauss chart now from our data you can see over here we have revenue and number of stock transferred in thousand and if i'll show you the data we have data over here where I have country name then I have number of stock transferred in thousand and on which date this stocks has been transferred so I just want to show the number of stocks transferred in thousand similarly if I come over here I have this revenue so this revenue data is coming from a, another raw data sheet where I have this revenue column from different team so these revenues are generated from different team so we can create either this one or this one both has the same process so let's create this chart which shows how many stocks that we have transferred so let's go to our second page And change the data source but before we change the data source let's discuss about this setup section as we will be discussing about setup section and each and every option that is present in setup section as well as style section we will be simultaneously updating this chart as we have this chart over here so this setup section uses the property panels to configure the chart options and the first option that we have is the data source so a data source provides the connection between the component and the underlying data set so this gauss chart is your component and this is the underlying data set for example i have this youtube data tutorial with the tree map data right but we need to change the data source and take this data source which is gds44 so that i can show number of stock transferred so now if i want to change this data source i can simply come over here under this data source section click on it and change from my added data source or select this data source which is under my added data source now once i have added this data or updated the data source then the next option that we have over here is date range dimension so this option appears if your data source has a valid date range dimension and if you come over here in your raw data then you will see that you have a date of transfer over here which is date so that's why looker has 
by default selected date of transfer as a date range dimension. So this date range dimension is used as the basis for limiting the date range of the graph that we have created over here. Now the next option that we have over here is matrix. So matrix measures the thing contained in dimension and provide the numeric scale and data series for the chart. As by default looker has selected record count, you can see over here record count 5.1k. So this is the numeric scale and the data series for this chart. So what I need to do over here is that I need to show the number of stocks transferred in thousand. So I'll simply click over here and select this number of stock transferred in thousand. And you will see that it's 2.5 million. Now the next option is the optional matrix. So this optional matrix lets you show an additional matrices if you want to show it on your graph. For an example, let's turn it off and click on view. Right now on this graph, you won't be able to see this optional matrix option. But if I click on edit and if I turn this optional matrix on and add a metric, let's select record count. And if I go to view and come back to my chart, I will have an option which says optional matrix. Right now it's showing number of stock transferred in thousand. Now if I select this optional metric and select record count, you will see that it's showing record count 5.k, sorry 5.1k. So this optional matrix let your user to have additional matrices in the same graph which can provide much more information. So let's select this number of stock transferred in thousand over here, click on edit. Then we have this default date range. So this default date range allow your users to limit the date range of your graph basically. So the first option is auto. It uses the default date range de determined by the charts data source. And then we have an option of custom. It lets you use the calendar widget from here to select a custom date range for the chart. Now if I click over here then I will have this calendar widget and I can select from these options as my custom date range. Now the next option that we have over here is comparison date range. So it displays the comparison data for the selected time period. If you want to compare your data for a selected specific period of time then you can use this date compare type or this comparison date range. Now the next option that we have over here is filter. So this filter restricts the data that is displayed in the component and the component over here is your chart by including or excluding the values you want to specify. So suppose if you want to include or exclude a certain value, you can click on this add a filter, then create a filter and you can give a name of your filter, then either include or exclude the value from a specific field. Then you have to select a condition over here and give a value then click on save then your chart will only show the data based on your filtration for us we will not add any filtration so we will go back so filtration is the last option in your setup section so if i go to view i can see this gauss chart over here right but this gauss chart is nowhere near to this gauss chart which i have shown you earlier Right. So what we can do is that we can beautify this Gauss chart or make it more visually appealing. So to make it more visually appealing, we have to go back to our style properties of this chart. And this style properties control the overall presentation and appearance of the chart. And the first option within this style is primary metric. These options control the appearance of the scorecard current data. So you have your scorecard over here, right? So the first option is the compact number. It rounds number and displays the unit indicator. So if I unselect this compact number, you will see that you have a huge number over here. So it would be difficult for somebody to read this number. So it's better to select compact number and you will see that, okay, my total number of stock is 2.5 million. Then we have this decimal precision. It sets the number of decimal places in matrix value. Suppose if I want to give two decimal places, I can select two or even if I want three, I can select three. 
Now the next option that we have over here is the bar color. So this bar colors section control the appearance of the center value bar and the ranges this center value bar as well as this entire range. So the first option over here is bar color. This bar color helps you to set the color of the value bar which is over here. Now let's select this bar color as this color. And then we have option of range color. So it sets the color of your range. So from this point till this point is your range. Now let's select this color as this one. Okay. And let's go back to our page one. You can see that we have the same color right now, but we do not have this target. Okay. Now the next option that we have over here in a style. The next option is range limit. This option will appear by default, but if we use it, then actually we are using Gauss chart with range. And then there will be no difference between a simple Gauss chart and a Gauss chart with range. And I'm saying this why because if I come here, you will see that you have two options Gauss and this Gauss chart with range. So we are using this Gauss and within this Gauss chart, we cannot use a range, even though Looker has given us this range limits option. Okay, so we'll not be using any range limit over here. We will be using this range limit in our next video when we will be creating Gauss chart with ranges. Now the next option that we have over here is axis. It controls the appearance of the chart axis. The first option over here is show axis. It shows or hides the axis of the chart. Then we have this axis minimum and axis maximum. It sets the minimum value and the maximum value of the axis. Then we have this target. It lets you specify the target value of the chart. And this first option shows show target. It shows or hides the vertical target bar. Now when you click on this show target, you have to select the target value. So let's go back to our page one and see what was our first target value. So we set our target value of this, which is around 3 million. So the same thing we'll do over here is that we'll give target value of 3 million. And as soon as I give this target value as 3 million, you will see that you have a vertical line here. Now the next option that we have over here is missing data. So this option will help you to specify the missing values in your data. If you have a missing value, then you can either show it as no data, zero, hyphen, null or blank. Then the next option that we have within a style is label. It lets you specify the font type, color and size of metric you are measuring the cost. So suppose if I want to put it at 30, you will see that the font size has increased. If I want to change the font color, I can change it to red color. Then I have this font family. I can change it to Tahoma. Now this option hide metric name will basically hide the matrix name over here. And if I, if you want to hide the metric value, you can select this option and it will hide the metric value from your chart. The next option that we have over here is background and border. So this background set helps you to set the chart background color. So let's select this chart background color as this. Then you have this border radius. It adds rounded border to the chart background when the radius is zero. The background shape has 90 degree corners over here. When the border radius is 100, it produces the circular shape over here. Now the next option that we have over here is opacity. It sets the chart opacity. 100% opacity completely hides object behind the chart and 0% of opacity makes the chart invisible. So it's always advisable to select either 90% or 100% of the chart opacity. Now the next option that we have over here within style is border color. It sets the chart border color. Suppose if I want to select the chart border color as this color, I can select it. Right. Then the next option that we have over here is border weight. It sets the chart border line thickness. Then we have border style. It sets the chart border 
line style we have four different line styles solid that we are using right now then we have dashed then we have dotted and the last we have double so let's keep double and then we have this add border shadow it adds a shadow to the chart lower and right borders now if i click on view i will be able to see my gauge chart which is complete right now and it tells us that what is the health of our kpi and how is our metric is performing against our target goal so this is how basically you create and customize a simple gauge chart in looker or data studio happy learning and see you in the next video